with our spirit that we are the children of God. Why? Verse 17. And if children then heirs of heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, then we may what? Also be glorified with him. So I know I'm a joint heir because I'm getting the same thing that Jesus has already have. He have eternal life. And when I get in him, I have eternal life. My life has been extended from this old earth. On the other side of this life, I got another life. And actually my other life don't start until I get on the other side because I prepared for it while I'm here. Hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah, glory to God. My God, my God. Oh, Jesus. Now watch this, watch this. So when we understand this, now that was just, now, now here's the next one, reason number three. And, 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 and Timothy, before I get there, Second Timothy says in, in 1 and 12, for the which cause I also suffer these things, nevertheless I am not ashamed. For I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that, that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him. So when you commit your body unto God, God will keep it. He'll keep you from the sin. Reason number three that they, we don't want to admit we have idols, we are trying to meet a need only God can fulfill. Ultimate, the need we have for love, respect, security, admiration, or whatever cannot be met by the desires of your heart they can only be fulfilled by God. Do you understand that's something that you'll never be able to fulfill? Amen. A man will never be able to fulfill it. A woman won't do it. Money won't do it. Things won't do it. Nothing. Nothing. But the blood of Jesus. Nothing. There's a space that God has put in your spirit that nobody else can do it. He won't even shack with them. He won't shack with them. Sometimes we shack up with folks and then they tell they, we're the same as married. And you're shacking. Shacking is not a covenant. Shacking is a desire. But when you make a covenant, you covenant with that person and you covenant with them, you sign the blood. You sign your blood in because you've made a death wish. You said, I will love you until death do us apart. And as long as you're living... Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. I don't care, I got 50 years in. <laughs> That's what you did. Shacking up is not the same as that. That's not a covenant. That's not a covenant. The covenant was made with cutting of blood. Without the shedding of blood, there will be no redemption of sin. Jesus had to die before we died. He died for in our stead because our blood was no good. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Now, reason number three, I just gave you that one. Now, allow me to give you six common idols we all have in our lives. Six of them we all have in our lives. Don't let anybody disturb you so you don't miss your idol. <laughs> number one. Our own understanding. When you rely on your own understanding, that's an idol. Because Proverbs 3 and 5 and 3, 5 and 6 said, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. In all our ways acknowledge him and he shall direct our paths. Isaiah 55, 8 through 9 said, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as high as the heaven, for the heaven are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. So how can you follow your own mind? Your own mind is corrupt. Your own mind is evil. And an idol is anything that you trust in above God's word. That's an idol. Come on, repeat with me. Say, an idol, an idol is, is anything, anything I, trust in I trust in above God's word. Above God's word. That's an idol. So when you lean into your own understanding, that's an idol. Huh? Now, it's, it's, it's an idol. So everything is, the, anything that contradicts the promise of God, anything that contradicts the word of God, our perspective, 
are all idols. Number two, idol number two, a sense of security. You know, we have this sense of security. Well, I'm getting, I, I, I got bonds and I got stocks and I got a house and I got a car, and, you know, and I, I got it made. Huh? You do? Deuteronomy chapter 11 and verse 14 through 16. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 14 through 16. That I will give you the rain of your land his due, in his due season. This is what God said. He told the children of Israel, I'll give you this, the rain of your land in due season, the first rain and the latter rain, that you mayest gather the corn and thy wine and thine oil. I will send grass in thy fields for the kettles, that they may eat and be full. Take heed to yourself that your heart be not deceived and you turn aside and serve other God and worship them. Now God said, I'm going to give you what you need, but don't try to think that you can do it by yourself. Don't think that you can make security for yourself. You see it all the time, and I'm not fighting that on television. You know, just put your money here, and it grows and grows and grows, and it just grow. And, and, you know, by the time you're 65, you got it made. That's not always true. They don't factor in sickness. They don't factor in any fires in your home. They don't, none of that factor in. They're talking about a healthy person. Do you know that insurance company only, when they talk about a $200 a million insurance, that's only to healthy folks. You had a heart attack, you ain't getting no million dollars insurance. Stroke, diabetes, forget it. Overweight, you're not going to get it. Y'all looking at me not strange. I'm just telling the truth. You're not going to get it. That's for healthy people, young folks, Gerber babies. <laughs> but you, you're not going to get it unless you pay a waiver, a high premium on your policy. So, a sense of security. But now, watch this. When you think about you, you got everything under your control. And, and you think that you can always do it. You're not. So when we see our bills piling up, God already promised what he's going to do. He promised to take care of us. When you, you can't understand and figure your way out of something, God always told you that I am the way. I am the way. And you still trying to ponder yourself, how am I going to get out of this? How am I going to pay my bills? How am I going to do this? And how am I going to do that? If you serve God, remember, obedience is the first thing. Yes. You look, if you obey God, I declare he'll make a way for you. Yes, I declare it. I stand here now after 51 years in the church. I've been a tight payer all my life. And I've, I've, all my life I've given my tithes and I've given. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Year after year, I started out, when I, was, when I started out, I wasn't making that much of money. And I was paying my tithes. Sometimes it was a, a $10 a week. It went from 10 to 20. Now I, my tithes went over that. And I end up paying, a th uh, uh, f I pay $500. I, pay, I give seven or $800 of my money every week to the church. Every week. 52 weeks a year. That's just here. That is not other places. Now, you, I give to get to give. So I give to get so I have more to give. And the more I give, the more I get. So if you giving to keep it, you are, you, you're begging and mad, you're giving it. They're all they talking about is money, money, money. You talking about money too, just a silent way. You looking at these things, don't tell me, oh, if I had the money, oh, if I had the money, I get this car, I get that, I get that dress, I get this. You be just like that lady, uh, her husband told her, didn't I tell you not to buy no more clothes? She said, she said, didn't I tell you to resist the devil? She said, I did, but when he looked at it from behind, he said it looked it pretty good too. <laughs> so I got it. Now, you, <laughs> that's an idol too. But if you learn to give it to God, learn to give it to the church, learn to give it to good things, learn to give to good causes, and you, I guarantee you, God will bless you like you've never been blessed before. Not just with money, but God will bless you with understanding. He will bless you with health. Things that tried to take you out, God won't let it take you out. God won't let it take you out. Cancer is just another word. Cancer scares a lot of folks. When they get cancer, they just all the things, next thing hit their mind, they're going to die because they got cancer. There's a lot of folks living with cancer. Living with it or either don't let it kill them. 
You don't let the, that's the name kill you. Somebody say you got cancer, you just roll over and die. Stand up. The God that I serve is able to heal you. He got a promise out there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I've been living free from it for seven years and didn't get no operation. And I got my last checkup in May and the doctor told me I'm still cancer free. I'm still cancer free. So do you understand it's God that do the healing? You got to trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean to your own understanding. Hallelujah. And as many people we prayed for healing that, that they went and they found out they didn't have it. They thought they, that they had found it, but they went back the next time it wasn't there. A sense of security. Now, item number two, number three, goals and dreams. Help me say goals and dreams. Now, 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 Luke 12 and 16 through 21, get that. Luke 12, 16 through 21. This is the man that God called a fool. And if God called you a fool, you're a fool. You're a fool. Luke 12, 16 through 21. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, the grounds of a certain rich man brought forth plentiful. And he thought within himself, saying, what shall I do because I have no room? He said, well, I can give something to the poor. I can do this and donate that. No, 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 he didn't say that. He said, I have no room. Watch these eyes now. Watch this. Now, now here we go. Let's, let's look at these eyes, first of all. And he spake a parable unto him, unto them, saying, the grounds of a certain rich man brought forth plentiful. And he thought within himself, saying, what shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruit. And he said, this will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater and there will, and there will I bestow all my goods. And I will say unto my soul, soul thou have much goods laid up for many years. Take thine eat, eat, drink, be merry. Be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool. Did God call him a fool? Thou fool. <laughs> this night, thou soul shall be required of thee. Then those shall, those shall, those, who shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. So when you look at, uh, at goals and, and dreams and you think that you, you know, you, you got everything made and you just said, you know, this is going to happen and, and everything going to work out well for me and you're not thinking about nobody else. He tried to fulfill his dream himself. You can't fulfill your dream by yourself. God never sent a selfish dream just for you and your benefit. He never give you anything just for you. Everything we have, our life, is shared with somebody else. Our money is to help somebody else. It helps us also, but it's also to help somebody else. Everybody don't have the same as you have. They don't. So God blesses you to help others. In Psalm chapter 10 and verse 45, get this, Psalm 10 and verse 45. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 10 and, and, and verse uh, 4 and 5. Got it? It said, the wicked, though the pride of his countenance, will not seek after God. Now, who is it that don't seek after God? Wicked. The wicked. Through his what? Countenance. Through his pride and his countenance, you know, things look good for him. They will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. His ways are always what? Grievous. Thou judgment as far above out of his what? For all his what? Enemies. He's what? He's puffed up. At them. Now let me give you something here that's going to help you. Get 2 second, second, uh, uh, Corinthians chapter 10. I want you to understand that all your dreams are not from God. All of your thoughts are not from God. Well, I want to do this and I'm going to invest in this because God told me to do this and God showed me this. Now, let me show you. They all are not. That's why you ought to seek God. In all our ways, seek him and he'll direct your path. Second Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 
three through five. Somebody start reading. <coughs> Though we walk in the flesh. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Though we live in the flesh. What's what it says? We don't war after the flesh. Our fight is not with the flesh. That's not the thing. If we don't fight the flesh, but what happened? Our weapon, we cannot use our flesh to fight. We're not going to win. For the weapons of our warfare is not carnal, but they are mighty through God. To the what? To the pulling down of what? Stronghold. What is a stronghold? Simply put, with all of, without all of this uh, philosophy and language, simply put, it's something got a stronghold on you. That's a stronghold. A stronghold so you see that you can't get away and you can't break loose. But read it over again. You're on the mic. Read it. Come on, turn on in here. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Are not carnal. But mighty through God. Mighty through God. To the pulling down of strongholds. Pulling down a stronghold. Casting down imaginations. Now, wait, wait a minute. Is that, see, you can have imaginations. And you think that imagination is a dream. And it's just imagination. A fascination. A lot of times you think God has showed you something and it's wrong. You just had imagination. You ate the wrong thing. told you to leave them neck bones alone and you wouldn't. <laughs> Blood pressure went up. You saw some of everything. Look, read it, read it, read it, read it. And every high thing <laughs> and every high thing that exalted itself that exalted itself against the knowledge of against God. Against the knowledge of God. Every high thing. That's what we're to pull down. So all your dreams and your goals is not given by God. And every what? Come on, the next thing is and, what? And bring it into captivity. Bring it into captivity. Every thought. Every thought. Every thought. So you got to guard your mind of what you're allowed to go through your mind. Yes. That's how the, the idols come in. Through your mind. Read it. To the obedience of Christ. To the obedience of Christ. You got to tear it down and bring it into captivity. That means you got to put it in a place it can't get out again. Hold it there. Thank you, Jesus. All right, let's, let's, let's go, let's, let's, let's move on here to uh, idol. Number, well, well, here's where you're supposed to put your trust at. Put your trust in God, Hebrews 11 and 6. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. All right, number four. Idol number four is relationship. Everybody say relationship. relationship. Now, do not be like Lot. He had a relationship with his uncle, but his relationship was selfish. It's bad to have a selfish relationship that everything is built around you. Everything's built around you. Yeah, is anybody, don't, don't holler out, but just inside, just say, yeah. But <laughs> if anybody had a relationship, it was all about the other person, nothing about you. They always want you to do something, but they don't do nothing. Y'all grunting out loud, man. I didn't tell you. Get your hand down. I didn't tell about it. Raise your hand. What's wrong with y'all? They always want you to do it. Something for them, but they don't do nothing for you. That's not a relationship. Huh? That's not a relationship. Relation, relating one to the other, and we're in a ship together. <laughs> we relate to each other because we're in the same ship. But you're always in another boat, and I got to tug you along. <laughs> Lord, help me here. Lot was not supposed to go with Abraham. God didn't call him to go. The Bible said in Genesis 12, 1 through 5, it said, And Abraham left his kindred like God told him, and Lot went also. You got a lot of folks that just tag along. Tag along. And when you get a lot of lots go with you, you're going to have a lot of trouble. But what God told us in Isaiah 40 and verse 30, it said, but they that wait upon the Lord. He said, but they, but they that wait, wait upon the Lord, Lord shall, shall renew, renew their strength and they shall mount up 
with wings as an eagle. They shall run and not faint and walk and not be weary. Now, here's what this word wait. This is the, the, the emphasis on the word wait. It's how you're waiting. Look at somebody say, how are you waiting? Ask them, how are you waiting? Because wait me in there is, is the same as trial of patient. It, it patient you're biding under, but wait means here to wrap around and hold on. See, if you come from the country like I did, they, when they grew, uh, grown tomatoes plant, they take a tomato, they would put a pole in the ground right beside the tomato. And a little tomato plant would wrap around that so when they get up and they got tomato, they didn't fall to the ground and rot. And so what you want to do, if you're waiting on God, wrap yourself around God's word. Wrap yourself around some prayer. Wrap yourself around knowing God not. Hold on to it. And when the storm comes, it will not shake you. You're waiting on God. You're not sitting here waiting with your hand behind your back, waiting with your eyes closed. You're waiting on God because you're wrapped up and tied up in his word. Hallelujah. You're not just sitting down crying, waiting on God. You're letting the devil whoop you. There was beating on your head and you're talking about I'm waiting on God. He said, fight the good fight of faith. Didn't God tell us to fight the good fight of faith? The good fight of faith is in God's word because faith comes by what? And hearing what? The word of God. That's what we fight with. Number five. Our fifth idol. The past. Help us say, hold it on to the past. Now, 2 Corinthians 1, 3 through 7. 2 Corinthians 1, 3 through 7. Watch this. Blessed be God. Even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort, who have comforted us in all our tribulation, that ye may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble, by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comfort of God. For as the, he, as the suffering of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also abound by Christ. And whether we are be afflicted it is for your consolation and salvation, which is affected in endurance of the same suffering which we also suffer, or whether we be comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. And our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that as ye are partakers of the suffering, so shall you be also of the consolation. So in other words, God have comforted us. Seek to comfort somebody else. Don't down folks or laugh at people when you think they're in trouble. Just like God brought you out, he brought you out so you could tell somebody else that he'll bring you out. And they may ask you, say, how do you know? He's going to bring me out. I have the word under him that is able to keep you from falling. Under him that is able. See, sometimes we think we're consolating people and we're only adding to it. Do you understand? There's nobody in here that when you, you, you got in trouble, sometimes you know you did it yourself. You know you did it. You don't need nobody to come say, if you ain't did this, you would have you wouldn't be in all that. You already know that. Tell me something I don't know. I'm trying to get out of it. Give me a hand. Pull me out. Throw me a rope. But don't hang me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Idol number six is hobbies. Help me say hobbies. Matthew 6 and 21. For where your treasures are is, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. In Proverbs 16, 25. There's a way that seems right unto men, but the end there are the way of death. Now, we got hobbies. And what is hobbies? Those are some bad things. You know, these are hobbies. You know, I only can play golf on Sunday. They, that's the only time they're letting me tee off. I'll be working the rest of the week. I have to see all my games. And, you know, child, we work all the week, and I'm tired. That's the only rest day I have. And my horse, my, 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 my hobby is, you know, I, I, I like bingo. So I have to play bingo. And, they, you know, only time I can get there is on Sunday. And so all your little hobbies. But. The devil have taken 
Do you, and, and people don't even see the thing. The devil, I remember when there was no liquor stores open on Sunday. Now, I'm telling my age. But they did not open up liquor stores on Sunday. I remember when they, they, they didn't even play football on Sunday. They was up there. The professional game was played on Saturday. Now, the, the college games are played on Saturday. The, the, the schools are played on Friday night. Professional played on Thursday night. They added Thursday night. They added Sunday night on top of Sunday. They added Mo they Monday night was when it used to be always played. Now, our little league team, they're playing on Sunday morning. They don't care about that. And here you are in the church and you got your son or your daughter in the little league and they're on Sunday. I got to be out there to cheer little Johnny on. And little Johnny and you both may end up in hell because that's your hobby. Where a man's heart is, that's where you think. When your heart, where's your heart? If your heart is right with God, you'll be with God. Anything that you put over God takes the place of God. That's why I, I, I said it this morning, worth bearing again. One of the biggest problems we have here at this church, and I believe when we get over that and we get enough folks to get over that, you're going to see the blessings of God pouring out on people. They're going to be falling out, coming in, and they'll be coming from everywhere. When we get this lazy <gasps> spirit out of here of folk being late, this late demon. A person go to his job, they, they don't miss their job, they have to be there, and they are doing their job on time, but they creep in late to God's service. Just like God's service don't mean anything. Just like, well, I can come in late to the church, because it don't really mean nothing for me to be. It do mean something. What do you think God is? Is God a man? You do more for a man, do you understand? That is an idol. You don't care about getting to church on time. You don't want to be in the prayer because son says prayer. You ought to be praying anyway. You don't know how to pray, pray for me because that'll give you some experience. Let me go. <laughs> so do you understand? Man ought to always pray. If not, he's going to what? He's going to lose strength. That's what faint means, lose strength. And we ought to be faithful to God. Faithful to God. Faithful to God. My God, do you, you think that I don't, it, it, I get up at 6 o'clock every Sunday morning. I'm up at 6. Every Wednesday morning, I'm up at 5 for the prayer. Do you think that I don't feel sleepy sometimes when the alarm go off? Sometimes I get up before it go off. You think I'm, 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 I don't feel tired? But that's not the thing. I got a commitment. My commitment to God is just like my commitment to my wife. If I tell my wife I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. She don't have to keep saying, please do this. Yeah, please do this again when you're, no. If I tell you I'm going to do it, it's done. If I got the health and strength, I'm going to do it. If I tell you I'm going to give you something, I'm going to give it to you. You don't have to keep bugging me about it. I'm going to do what I said. Well, do you understand that God is looking at that too? You, you see the schedule, you know what time it is. Now you say I'm fussing, but I'm not. I'm trying to get you to let go of your idol. Hobby. There's a way to seem right unto men, but the end are the way of death. Finally, how do you let go? This is how God helps us to get rid of, get rid of all these demons of idol. God will help us to recognize that He is not, he, that He is not uh, uh, first in our life. So if you don't have God first, that's what I would get you to recognize now. That just just being slowful, and think it's all right. To be slow for. But it's not. God will help you to recognize that. Proverbs 3 and 5 again. In all thy ways acknowledge him. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not to your own understanding. The second thing is. The Lord will help us discern. Which thoughts are causing us problems. Do you know there's some thoughts that call you problems? The devil can shoot them in your head. And they call you problems. There's a whole lot of folk who wouldn't even been in jail. They was over there shopping, and they were, they were so happy that morning they went. They were shopping and looking for stuff, and then all of a sudden, you know, somebody else walked in. The, the clerk didn't pay you no attention, and if somebody else walked in, she walked over and said, may I help you? And you said, well, I've been here. Why don't she say that to me? All of a sudden, the thought comes through your mind, I'm going to tell them all. Yeah. And you go tell them all. Yeah. When the Bible said a soft answer turned away wrath, that's the right thought, a soft answer. Anything come through there, say, I'm going to tell in my mind that. That's the wrong thought. Rebuke that. But that soft thought, soft answer. So, oh, oh, I, I was here. Do you mind if you show me this first? 
Now, that changed the tell of mine. But you hollow down, hey, I was here. What's wrong with you? Well, now, that, that was the attitude. <laughs> then you, that's, that's a conflict. I pay your salary. You should be over here helping me. No. Soft answer. Oh, my God, I was here. Could you show me this? Then they say, oh, I'm sorry. They come over and they'll do it. Don't let the evil thoughts get in your mind, in your mind, because so a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So God will rec let you, rec you start recognizing when you're going to do something wrong. And then, hallelujah, God will help us to put him first in our life. How you do that? Set your affections on things above and not on things on the earth. Now, I said that this morning, I have did hundreds of funerals, hundreds. And these 50 years I've been preaching, hundreds of funerals. But one thing.